I get questions all the time asking me how to work the market in NHL 23. Welcome to episode number two of Becoming Hut Rich. This year, we're going to up the ante a little bit. Last year, we turned 1,000 coins into 1 million coins, and this year, we're turning 1,000 coins into 5 million coins. In the series, I'll be giving you all my auction house strategies, from finding your flips to understanding market fluctuation, as well as which items to consider throughout the year. You'll also be getting a look of the behind-the-scenes math of every single deal that we do so that you can follow along for the journey. Before we dive on into it, this series is a lot of work. It's it's one of my favorites and I'd love to have you follow along here with me. Make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. And if you enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and click like. Let's get right on into it. We made a lot of coins here in week two, but before we get into it, let's cover the basics. Before we get into the video, we need to first understand the basics. The first is that there's EA tax. The EA tax is currently at 5%. EA takes 5% of the coins that you make off of any transaction in the auction house. For example, if we bought something for 500 coins and we sold it for 1,000, we would take home 950 coins, returning a 450 coin profit. Items that are desirable to you are also desirable to other players. Whether they're required for sets or top players to help fill your lineup, these are a good place to start for when you're looking for cards to flip. Examples of these would be icons for the icon choice pack, or players like Crosby or McDavid. The 59 minute method gets talked about quite a bit, but it's important to understand the complexities of it. Players wanna get rid of their items fast so they can turn their cards into coins. To take advantage of this, you could scope out the 59 minute mark for some quick deals. You also may be able to find deals at the three, six, 12 hour, or even the one or three day mark, but normally the best deals are at the 59 minute mark since players are trying to get rid of these items as quickly as possible. If you've been around long enough, this feature is fairly new, but it's important to use. When you're flipping cards, you wanna focus on only the ones that you're trying to find, not all the others that are on the screen. Rather than scouring the market, you can narrow down and stock the card that you're specifically looking for. Simply click on compare price and you'll only see the card that you want. When you begin to stockpile your coins, you can move up the food chain from flipping 82 overall gold cards to flipping players like Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon, or Austin Matthews. Lastly, it's important to understand that the market fluctuates. The market is far from stagnant and we're gonna cover all the details throughout the year so you know the best times to buy, sell, and when you should be prepared to strike. In our previous episode, we were targeting the 82 overall gold players. For our next target, we honed in on the base icons. One of the reasons why I found this to be most attractive is that players are using these sets to look for either Gretzky, Lemieux, or another icon player. A good buy is under 3,000 coins. On average, I was able to scoop these up for 2,750 coins each, and we did this 358 times last week. That set us back about 900 184,500 coins. And on average, I was able to sell these for 3,745 coins. That resulted for us in 1,340,710 coins. And after EA took their share, 1,273,674 coins for a profit of 289,174 coins. That brought up our total to 373,635 coins. The next target I decided to go after here were silver goalies. I was able to scoop a few of these up, especially with the loyalty packs coming out for around 300 coins a piece. After doing this five times, it only cost me 1,500 coins and I was able to sell them for 1,995 coins. Bringing our total to 9,975 coins after EA takes their share, 9,476 coins for a total easy profit of 7,976 coins. That brought up our total to 381,611 coins. Up next, we decided to target gold jerseys. Now I was able to scoop up about 16 of these for right around 500 coins each. Some were a bit cheaper and some were expensive, but on average picked these up for around 500 coins each. That set us back about 8,000 coins. We were to sell these for 1,995 coins each, just like we did for our silver goalies. And we were able to return a nice profit. Our total that we sold the gold jerseys for was 31,920 coins, our after tax, Max profit was 31,124 coins for a pretty simple flip of 22,324 coins, bringing our total to 403,935 coins. Again, I wanted to take advantage of the loyalty packs flooding the market, which left a lot of gold players out there. 
The first one was just the gold non-NHLers. I only scooped up 10 of these, but I was able to pick them up for about 750 coins each, resulting in 7,500 coins spent. We sold them for around 895 coins a piece, which brought us to 8,950 coins. After EA took their profit, we were at 8,502 coins for a small profit of 1,002 coins. Our total now is sitting at 404,937 coins. But where it really made a difference was in the gold NHL players. I sat at the 59 minute mark here, was able to scoop up 98 players. Now the prices did vary, but on average, we scooped these up for about 1,200 coins each. That set us back about 117,600 coins, and I was able to flip them for about 1,745 coins a piece, resulting in 171,010 coins. After EA took their share, we had 162,459 coins left for a profit of 44,859 coins. Our total now is at 449,796 coins. Lastly, I was able to target a few bigger players. Rather than flipping based on simple tonnage and shooting with a shotgun, we were able to shoot with a sniper rifle. The first player I decided to target was Spotlight Latang. I was scoping him out and he was going for around 150,000 coins. I got a bidding war on this one and picked him up for 120,100 coins. I was able to flip him and sell him for 147,995 coins. After EA took their share, we took away 140,595 coins for a quick, easy profit of 20,495 coins. Bring our total up to 470,000. 291 coins. After this, I decided to move on to some of the master icons. I was playing around whether or not it was worth actually getting some of these players and turning them into the sets to either acquire Lemieux or Gretzky. I'm still debating on whether or not that is actually a fair deal. But in the meantime, we picked up a couple power up icons. The first one was Richard. We picked him up for 50,000 coins here in a bid, sold him for 58,995 coins. After EA took their share, we had 56,045 coins for a small profit of 6,045 coins, bringing up our total to 476,336 coins. We sniped up another power up icon in Andrew Chuck for 50,000 coins, flipped him for 59,995 coins. Our after tax total was 56,995 coins for a profit of 6,995 coins, which now left us with 483,331 coins. And our last flip of this episode was a pretty good one. I was able to snipe up Richards for right shy of 40,000 coins. We sold him for 52,995 coins for an after-tax profit of 50,345 coins and a nice easy profit of 10,346 coins. Bring our total after episode number two up to 493,000 677 coins that's it for me on this one guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video make sure you go ahead and click like and if you love nhl 23 content make sure you go ahead and click subscribe it greatly helps me out again i'm in advantage and i will see you guys next time